We started this week with an observation about the real world. Most people around the globe enjoy much more free time and much more consumption now than they have been only 100 years ago. For example, six-day working weeks and 12-hour working days, including for kids in some places, were not uncommon in the beginning of the 20th century. What prompted this dramatic change in our lives so that today we can begin to think about the unthinkable, four-day working weeks, three-day weekends, and as a result, a much more enjoyable life. What we think happened can be formalized using the so-called constraint optimization, a technique widely used in economics today to explain choices that economic agents make, make under scarcity. Our objectives and wants are unlimited in this framework, but our abilities to reach those objectives are limited. So the key question we addressed this week was how to do the best we can given our constraints. Our constraints are defined by what's feasible. What is feasible, however, is not always what we want. It is not always desirable. We found a way to combine the two, the feasible and the desirable, and found a point that is both desirable and feasible. And we can't do better than this point. We called it consumer equilibrium. The equilibrium point is what we predict the individual will choose, given their constraints and their preferences. At the same time, we saw that every choice involves opportunity costs. That is the foregone benefits of making a certain choice. Incurring those opportunity costs meant that sacrificing one of our goals necessarily uh, means achieving another, and vice versa. Achieving a goal necessarily means sacrificing another goal. We also learned one application of constraint optimization, the model in which the individual chooses free time and consumption to maximize their utility subject to a feasibility constraint defined by their wage. So the model that we have developed this week is a very powerful individual level model. However, it's not only a model, it helps explain the bulk of the real world data on the working hours and leisure hours in the last 100 uh, years. This data, uh, this data points we can uh, explain are both at the country level over time and across countries at a certain point in time. So what you've seen this week is economics in action. Keep watching the next week's videos for even more action. Don't forget to attend the live lecture as well. We'll put these models in action as well. Thank you.